big and a little bit great. All our friends who are um, listening to us via live, sh live stream on Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, and all the other social media that we're going to post this information. Amen? Wonderful. So today we're going to talk about when God rose out of glory in the wilderness. And uh, we've been in a series um, mining the wilderness. So we are still in the wilderness. And then we have a subtopic, the glory of God in the wilderness. And another subtopic, no wilderness, no glory. And somebody just that their head. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we just thank you. For this time where we can come and we approach your throne of, of grace. We thank you, Father, for this morning. We thank you uh, for all those who are gathered in the sanctuary. We pray your blessing upon them your strength upon them and your might upon them. We thank you for the necessary information, the necessary revelation that we're going to receive this morning that will build us up to strengthen us uh, to keep us um, during this week and during this year. We pray a blessing upon those who are watching us via streaming. We pray for salvation, we pray for healing, and we also pray for revelation glory to fall in the house this morning. So, Father, in blessing, bless your people. In Jesus' name, everybody shout. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Good. So, we're talking about um, glory. Glory in the midst of the, of the wilderness. And we are saying, uh, no wilderness, no glory. Uh, we do not like a wilderness situation. Wilderness uh, um, associates us with pain. Um, with um, a real arid frontier, a very hot sun, it could be a, a sandy wilderness, it can be a rocky wilderness, it can be a wilderness just filled with thorns and briars, a wilderness that is filled with wild beasts, animals. Uh, those of you who don't like the rattlesnakes, you're going to see it in the, nobody talking to me, in the, in the wilderness. Uh, you're afraid of the lion, you're going to see it where? In the wilderness. All right. I saw all those like the tiger and the, the bear. Oh no, 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 you can't outrun that bear. So you're going to see it <laughs> once you visit the wilderness. But we also are in a wilderness right now. We call it the COVID wilderness. And that's why we are jumping into the wilderness and we are trying to reach ourselves out of this COVID and this pandemic particular season that we are in. The children of Israel found themselves in a particular wilderness situation. They were in slavery for some 430 years. Think about that. 430 years. And the word of God says that they cried out to God and then God heard their cry. Uh, somebody said, thank God that when we call on God, he would hear us and he's going to what? To answer us. So during this pandemic and COVID season, we all ought to cry out to God and we ought to pray when we hear about a friend, when we hear about some places closed down, we, we pray and we send the blood of Jesus to those areas to close down this COVID disease. But in the midst of the wilderness situation, in the, in the midst of their slavery mentality, God led them with a surprise he showed up with the glory somebody said thank god for the glory because when we talk about the glory of god we're going to see it personified in uh, the journey to the wilderness with the, with the children of israel and we will see the glory of god and so when we talk about the glory of god we are talking about the cardboard or the doxa i'm going to spell that cardboard a hebrew word ka B O W D. If you're taking notes, K A B O W D. Somebody who's a good writer can write it on the Facebook wall. The cardboard or the doxa, D O X A, glory, uh, glory, which is the essence, the nature, the attributes, and infinite perfection of God, His character, and God's personality. Or what he is in himself. The cardboard, one more time, the cardboard or the doxa glory is the essence who God is, his nature, his attributes. So grab one of those words, meaning when we talk about glory, 
I say, I want that. The essence of God. The nature of God. The attributes of God. The infinite perfection of God. God is the ultimate perfection and he displays it in his cabled glory. Then when his cabled glory comes, he displays his character and personality of what he is himself. So hold on to some of those words. And then we have the Shekinah glory. The Shekinah glory and it is spelled I like she, S-H-E, K-I-N-A-H. One more time for those who are going to help me write it on the wall there. S-H-E, K-I-N-A-H, the Shekinah glory, which is, this is the visible manifestation of his presence to mankind. So when we talk about the, the Shekinah glory, we are talking about the visible manifestation of his presence to mankind. This is when God's glory transcends the spiritual realm to impact the natural realm. I'm going to go over it, taking my time because it might be fresh and new to some folks. But we have some scholars in between. But I want to catch it because after that, I might be speaking up a little more dust. But the, the, the Shekinah glory, which is the, the visible manifestation of his presence to mankind. So God can show himself visible to man in his glory. And this is when God's glory transcends in the spiritual realm, or it transcends the heavenly realm to impact um, the natural realm. And so therefore, um, God wants us, uh, God wants his glory to transcend the spiritual realm and impact our natural realm. Can we say God? Uh, transcend okay. your spiritual realm to impact this natural realm. Uh, One more time, so say God, uh, transcend today. Okay. Yeah, your, your spiritual realm and impact my natural realm with the glory of God. God, we thank you. We want you to transcend the spiritual realm and the heavenly realm overrule it because you see the glory is kept up in heaven if you want to go up into heaven the atmosphere of heaven is the glory of god the atmosphere of the earth is air when we breathe in that atmosphere we are breathing in air we take a breath take a breath huh? you know under your mask so when you breathe in this atmosphere on earth, we are breathing in air, oxygen, carbon monoxide, nitrogen, all the gases. But when we, we go into the glory realm and we inhale, we inhale glory. Come on, somebody say, God caused me to inhale glory. Somebody say, how about that? Somebody got to inhale glory. Because when we talk about the glory of God this morning, this is not only um, for the children of Israel. They, they had their time of glory. But uh, God, God has a glory for us. The word of God declares that the earth shall be filled with a knowledge of the glory of God. So I am giving you knowledge about the glory of God. And this morning, as we talk about the glory of God, we want the glory of God to transcend the heavenly realm. God's over a super rule up in heaven and say, this glory, we're going to release some in global life church today. We're going to release, release some in your church. We're going to release some of this glory also in your home and in your business. Ah, uh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Now Isaiah chapter 4 and verse 5 and 6. And I want to, you to write um, that for me on the wall. Isaiah 4, 4, 5 and 6 says. It says, then the Lord will create over all of Mount Zion. Talking about the church. Talking about his people who dwell in his church. And over those who assemble there, a cloud of smoke by day and a glow of flame and fire by night. Over, over, it says over everything, the glory will be a canopy. Over everything, the glory will be a canopy. It will be a shelter and a shade from the heat of the day and a refuge 
and a hiding place from the storm and the rain. So therefore, we are seeing here a little bit glimpse and description about the glory of God in Isaiah chapter 4, 5, and 6. It says that the God is going to create glory. So when glory comes into our atmosphere, that is created glory. So therefore, I can say, God, create your glory for aura. Call your name and say, God, God. this morning, create your glory for aura. God, create your glory this morning for Global Life Church. Let's say it one more time, God. Create your glory for Global Life Church. God, create your glory for the Global Life us who are not present or watching us via streaming. God, create a glory just for them. Then the Lord will create over all of Mount Zion and over those who assemble there a cloud of smoke by day and a glow of flaming fire by night. So the same situation that the children of Israel had we are going to have the cloud is going to be over where we dwell and, and the flaming fire is going to be over where we dwell somebody say uh huh Come on, somebody say, get ready to rumble. And so what happened is that God, just as God surprised the children of Israel in the wilderness, when we think that the pandemic cannot get any worse and we want to rebound and bounce back, and it seems as though the, the bouncing back time is, you know, very hard and difficult, and we are, some of us are getting the shot, and some of us are drinking our, you know, our lemon water and what, what, herbal tea and ginger, and you, some of you don't want to shop, uh, uh, help yourself. But 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 we're doing all we can do. And, and but it says uh, in the midst of the wilderness, uh, in the midst of our earthly chaos, uh, in the midst of our church chaos, uh, in the midst of our family chaos. Uh, when 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 we when we, we, can, we think that God is not in our mess uh, and God is not in our wilderness, uh, God is just awaiting His season and His time to show up in your wilderness. Somebody else look at hands and say, God show up in all realms of wilderness. Somebody say hallelujah. So he says in Isaiah 4, 5 and 6, that God's going to surprise us, that he's going to release a glory. We cannot go through this thing just like uh, reading the word of God black and white and nothing is being manifested. I believe that this is the time for the glory of God to be manifested in our personal lives, in our family lives, and on our workplace, I mean, and in, our, in our businesses, and in our churches, in our islands and in our nation listen let, let this if you can let's show glory for america america needs what am i say glory one more time, America needs the glory of God in this conundrum and this wilderness that we are in every time we turn on the news. I think uh, just between the last week and t today, we have had some mass um, shooting in just one week. And uh, but there's a demon loose in America. Think about you going to work while the guys were, the people were changing their shift. Here comes a man to, to gun you down and you never made it at home. My God. Somebody said, my God. my God. There is a demon loose in America. And so therefore we got to start praying in America. We got to start calling upon heaven to open up portals in America. Open up portals in these islands in the Caribbean and in St. Thomas. We cannot be quiet. Come on, somebody say, I can't be quiet. Because he said in Isaiah 4, 5, and 6, he's about to create the glory of God for families, for individuals, for churches, for islands, and nation. Somebody I say God create your glory just for me. It's like when you're wearing a hat, you ladies in the fall, you, you don't want to look a hat that, that looks like everybody else is a hat. Somebody said, mm -hmm. uh -huh. and when you guys put on your coat, I mean, nobody here have a coat like mine. My, my coat is too fine. I guess somebody said, mm -hmm. <laughs> somebody really took a picture of you already. So I said, the pastor came in, click it. Uh -huh. ah, somebody said, hallelujah. Yeah. And so therefore you don't want someone to come wearing the same jacket, the same hat, the same dress, you ladies. Oh my God, you run home. And some of you ladies have a second dress in your car just in case you come and you look. And you just ease back out and balance it, ease back out and you come back in looking a little bit fresh. 
Uh, I'm telling you, the lady. Somebody say, ah. So that, that is how God is. A created glory is a, is a made as, especially for you. Specifically for you. Somebody say, hallelujah. Because God knows what you're going through too. Somebody say, hallelujah. Because in the midst of the COVID and the, uh, and the pandemic, people are still going through tough things in their life. People are still getting cancer and people are still getting a heart attack and all kind of stuff. People are still dying but you for no reason. And so therefore, we need the glory of God yes. to preserve us. Somebody say hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Come on, shout and say hallelujah if you can. Yeah. Hallelujah. That sounds good. It says uh, that the glory of God will be over our masters' families, over our homes, like a flaming fire by night and a cloud by day. The people in your neighborhood, listen, they're going to surprise you. They're going to rush into your house and you're going to be ready. And they're going to say, I see something over your house. And you say, well, I can't see it, but they can see it. Um, they'll be, just remember, Pastor told you about it, uh, that it's going to be a cloud by day and a glory fire by night. Somebody say Hallelujah. hallelujah. And so therefore God is going to, um, he says it's going to be like a canopy to protect you. People are going to run into your house to be protected from the heat of the day, from the trauma of the day, the tragedy that's happening in the land. There is going to be like a canopy. And he says over everything, the glory will be a canopy. It will be a shelter. The glory is a shelter. The glory is a canopy and a shelter and a shade from the heat of the day. The glory uh, it gives you ease during tough times. Remember tough times that do not last for a lifetime. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. And it says in the glory of God, it says a refuge and a hiding place from the storm and from the rain. So therefore here you have a good description about the glory of God in Isaiah 4, 5 and 6. You can meditate upon it some more. It's a canopy. It's a shelter. It's a cloud. It's a fire. It's a visible. The Shekinah. You can see it. Somebody say hallelujah. And then people are going to come to your house. Because if it is over your house, people are going to run to your house for shelter. They're going to run to your house also, it says, for refuge and a hiding place. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. So we're going to be hiding in the glory in our home. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so therefore, it, it, it says also in Isaiah 42, 13, 14 and 16, it says, When God rose out of glory in the wilderness, we serve a God who can roar. And here what the word of God tells us in Isaiah 42, you write that one down. It's a good one to meditate upon. It says the Lord will march out like a champion. That's Isaiah 42. And 13, 14, and 16, it says the Lord will match out like a champion, like a warrior. He will stir up his zeal. With a shout, he will raise the banner, the battle cry, and will triumph over his enemies. For a long time, I have kept silent. I have been quiet and held myself back. But now, somebody said, but now, like a woman in childbirth, uh, my white man had to come up here and preach that part for me. But like a woman in childbirth, uh, I cry out, uh, I gasp, I pant, uh, I will lead the blind by the ways they have not known. Uh, along unfamiliar paths, uh, I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. I mean, these are the things I will do. I will not be, I, I will not forsake you. I will not abandon you. Somebody says, Selah. Hallelujah. Let me share my thoughts and that. And I have a lot of stuff to say. I'm taking my time. And we could pack, um, um, cut this bad boy up into maybe five sermons. But I'm going to take my time and see what the Holy Spirit will do. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. We are talking about uh, when God rose out of glory in the wilderness. Uh, Isaiah 42, 13, 14, and 16 says, 
I'm right now in the midst of we are going through this wilderness situation. And what's happening, we are saying, I mean, I wonder what God is thinking towards us during this pandemic and COVID-19. God eyes is still upon us and is watching us to and fro. And Isaiah 40, 40 to 16 says, these are the things I will do. I will not forsake you. God is not through with you yet. Put up yourself and say, God, I thank you that you're not through with me yet. You're alive. You've got a purpose. So therefore, during this pandemic, you got to say, God, what is my purpose on the earth? And start dusting it off and start doing your purpose. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Because when you see faith without works is dead. you got to work your faith. You stand say, I'll just stand up and say, I'm a Christian. And I'm waiting for the pop, 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 pop. Your Christians are going to work your faith. Somebody said, work my what? Work my faith. Yes, you got you got to vocalize it. Not only say I'm a faith woman, a faith a man, but you got to activate your faith. Come on, somebody say I prophesy over yourself. I say I've got to what activate my faith because I'm still alive and God has not forsaken me and God has not what abandoned me. Somebody say hallelujah. And some people say that God, you've been quiet for so long. What do God what? Are you doing but in this verse let's, let's, let's go back through it now it says the lord will match out like a champion god will match out of his hollow throne like a champion somebody said uh-huh and all the earth will know yeah. when god our god the lord of the universe matches out like a champion somebody say hallelujah Hallelujah. And we're going to see it manifested when he marched out and he came down to the earth. The earth began, began to tremble because of the cardboard, because of the weight. Then we saw the Shekinah at a time when it shows up. You, you hear the earth rumble. You hear the, the blaring of trumpets and a carrying call and smoke and fire. And you haven't seen God yet, but he just touched down. Somebody said, God touched down this morning. Touched down this morning. I, 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 I don't think you want God to touch us. Somebody said, God touchdown this morning oh, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah and so the Lord will march out like a champion our God in the midst of this COVID and pandemic he's about to march out of his throne like a champion and he's going to drop some place on the earth and we are going to know for going to have on their cameras I mean they're going to take it they're going to be snapping and say that had to be God and the news media they're going to say that's God over there working. Somebody say hallelujah. It's about time God arrives. Hallelujah like a champion and, and let the people in the earth know the agnostics and the, the folks who are passing laws that are anti on the Bible. Listen, God is just quiet right now but listen he's about Isaiah prophesied in Isaiah 42 and that the Lord he's about to match like a champion. Now when he's going to match he's not coming by himself one man marching he's coming with all of heaven behind him somebody to back him up i can't hear the house up in here put your hands together and say something come on somebody say march on king jesus i need some old people in the church this morning well the preacher preaching there they say something on their mask march march on king jesus come on somebody say march on Woo, let nobody hang me here so the lord will match out like a champion. The, 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 the God who you're saying, I, I pass on what, what God is saying during uh, the COVID, what God is saying during the pandemic, what, what God is saying during this wilderness situation to me. But God said, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just uh, watching the earth. My eyes, uh, they're going to and fro all over the earth uh, to see the spot where he's going to come down and light on the earth. The Lord will march out like a champion, like a warrior. He will stir up his zeal. So we got a champion. A champion means that I've been there just like I'm Goliath. I won't pin the enemy. Boom. And therefore, I've got the metal to prove that I'm a champion. Tell somebody that God has at home, not in church. Tell somebody that God has the metal to prove and the belt to prove that he is the champion. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. Not only he says he is a champion, but therefore we have a dichotomous statement. He said, I am champion 
I am warrior. I came to encourage you this morning. You may be down and out. You may be knocked out. But let me tell you that God is saying that uh, he is your champion and God is your warrior. Ask somebody say hallelujah. You know, listen, when the warrior comes on the scene, we're going to make some noise. And we're going to make some noise to confuse the enemy. Right now, God is making some noise to confuse the enemy who tells you uh, that you're not saved. Who tells you that you're not a Christian. Who tells you that you're broke, disgusted, and sorry. But this morning, God is your champion and he is your warrior. I can run over the place, but you all might look scared. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say he's my champion. God's my champion. God's my warrior. And he says he will stir up his zeal. My God, this is, this is going to be a mess. He said, but it's that so, so the zeal of God. We, we have seen the zeal of God upon men like Samson, like David. We have seen the zeal of God upon men like Elijah and Jehaziel. And, and they, one guy, um, Jehaziel, my counterpart, I call him his, uh, but he went and he killed everything, everything that they had had until the prophet said, man, you did it too much. Uh, I just tell you a little thing. I just anoint you just to kill a few. But he was so, he had the zeal of God upon him. They killed everything, house, donkey, cattle, everything. And kill people, kill, kill. Wipe out the entire um, family. Oh my God, somebody said, my God. Zeal, somebody said zeal. So think about that. When the zeal of God comes, like a warrior, he will stir up his zeal. Come on, somebody, let's, let's put this in a prayer. And say, God, stir up your, your zeal. As a champion, stir up your zeal as a mighty warrior. Somebody say hallelujah. That's you and pray. He says, when I shout, he will raise as a battle cry. And will try, try, try triumph over his enemy. Right now, the enemy thinks uh, he's making the most noise. In that other, the one that's making the most noise. And everybody holding him back here in a fight. Uh, hold him back, hold him back, hold him back. Uh, and he's making, uh, he making the most, most noise. <laughs> but when you let him down, the guy give him one left. And he's down. All noise. <laughs> Somebody's a holiday. Come on, somebody said, that's my God. Right now, the enemy making a bunch of noise to us on earth. COVID-19 noise. Um, different type of strain. When you think you got uh, a shot to pin on one, and then the multiply, and they're just multiplying like wildfire. And you're saying, my God, God, what? And you're talking to God, and you're telling God is not responding. Hmm, but 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 uh, but I, I found it in Isaiah. Watch out! Uh, when 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 God begins to stir Himself up and His zeal, so the God of say, "Okay, God, no, we know, we kind of know, we kind of know." <laughs> Somebody said, mm -hmm. <laughs> "He says uh, with a shout, He will raise the battle cry. A battle is about to begin." Because in Psalm 24, 1, it says, the earth is the Lord. And then, so for God, he still has a real estate deed to the earth. And the psalmist David said, it is he who has made it, and not we ourselves, he has made us. Yeah, yeah. And so therefore, God, in, in, in Isaiah 42, and the verse 16, it says, I will not uh, forsake them. I will not, uh, in the midst of the pressure, in the midst of your broke, broke days in the midst of the pressure that the enemy is putting upon your spirituality God is saying I am still in the midst I might be quiet in your situation but watch out I'm about to roar I'm about to cry on your behalf I feel God somebody said roar I just came to take, take a relax but I feel some stuff happening somebody said hallelujah mm. yeah, yeah 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 so with a shout he will raise the battle cry just for you and will triumph over his enemies because remember that he is a, a, a champion and anytime a champion goes in the ring we expect uh, the champion you can put your money if you're a betting man or woman okay nobody, nobody saying nothing and the champion because you know that they're going to come out to win it and your pocket yeah, going to be yeah, yeah, looking yeah. healthy come on now <laughs> somebody say uh -huh. It says, for a long time I have kept silent. Here we go. He says, God is saying, for a long time I have been kept silent. I, I have been quiet and held myself back. You know, you, you have these dichotomous um, words. He says, I've been kept silent and I've been kept, kept quiet. Silent and quiet. You can't get it worse than this. 
You know what I mean? If you have your sweetheart up in the house and all the time you're saying, sweetie, how are you doing? And then they're and then talking to you. Somebody said, mm. mm. They say, they ain't happening in my house. Ah, yeah, yeah. Because like I said, before the sun goes down, put a kiss and tell and move on. But, but, but just, just imagine that you're, you're talking sweet uh, things. Sweet, uh, sweet nothings. You better talk some sweet things. Ah, yeah, yeah. ah you're sweet, sweet not the grave of it. Ah, yeah, yeah. Somebody got a romance. I'm going to drop my mic. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. And so you're talking and you're talking sweet, uh, spicy things. You really love Shakespeare. You know, to talk to a sweetheart. And then, uh, no, no butch. No, si silent. Somebody said, mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Kept silent and uh, quiet. I'm not getting nothing out of them. My God. And so it is. And so people can't take a God that is quiet and silent. They think God has abandoned them, but uh, let's go to Isaiah 42 and verse 6 says, I have not abandoned you. I think somebody better write that there. Because a lot of Christian folks when I meet them in the supermarket and they look like God has abandoned them. Oh, somebody say hallelujah. And, and, and you don't have to dodge pastor. They'll just come up and listen, okay? Because <laughs> somebody see you before you see me. Let's kill that cat. Somebody said, mm-hmm. You said, mm-hmm. Talking, their family. It says uh, for a long time I have kept silent. How do what, what do you do when God is silent? Uh, he said I have been quiet uh, and held myself back. I've been silent. I've been quiet. A uh, silent, quiet God just looking at the earth uh, and uh, the Williams on a twenty-four-seven rotation. And we are on it for a ride. You do, you do you know? You're on the earth going for a ride. And God's looking for you to see how you're enjoying the earth ride. There's no other place that you can be on with oxygen and a good ride like the, like the earth 24-7. Day and at night, uh, different seasons. So to God, God he placed you on an environment. Um, you're in place, uh, Adam and Eve in the environment a place of glory and then god is saying again he's coming back to bring back his glory yeah, yeah. back to the earth so somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah and so therefore you know when you you are quiet the other day we were going to um surprise i mean our grandson and so we were very quiet and, and he said grandpa when you come in when you're coming you're staying too long that's the word he used <laughs> too long taking ages <laughs> You see, I think it's ages to come. Well, because he came down, and when that passed away, I know you think it's our turn to come to see him. And his birthday is coming, and he's believing in hope that his grandma and grandpa's going to come. I said, you are taking to age, so we were quiet. We were quiet. Okay? And so therefore, when we were short now, and, and he saw us, we surprised him. He was all smiles. He didn't know what to do. He couldn't believe it. <laughs> but, but we were quiet for, we didn't say, hey, we're coming. Grandson, we're coming. We are quiet. Got to get out of the airplane, got out of the jet, quiet. And then uh, we got into the house, quiet. Went to the room, quiet. And then when he came out of his room and he was outside, we looked at him and we didn't look at him and he just didn't know we were there. And we looked at him and we looked at him and he's been around and around, uh, around outside. And we, we looked at him and then we said, we said, okay, we said, okay I think it's too much for us and him. Let's show up. Yeah, 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 you understand? So, 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 so don't think because God is silent and unquiet that he's not preparing something for, for the earth. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I believe God is preparing something. God is giving us a, a, a shift, a, 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 a supernatural glory shift in the earth that we have never seen before. Listen, when this thing hit the earth, they, they talked about when um, some years ago, maybe about 10 years ago, when an earthquake hit around India time, uh, it sent up to a tsunami, I mean to Africa. We were out on a ship, and I said, Lord God, help us out, out, out here. Uh, I remember it was around December. And all Asia, tsunami, we saw the, the pictures of people being wiped out like a tsunami. And so therefore, I believe is that God, the, the, the God who we think that is silent, he is behind the scene. I mean, preparing for a mega show up like a champion and a warrior. And you're going to say, my God, that had to be God, that must be God in that spot. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. But he says, but now, like a woman in childbirth, 
My God, I mean, I've seen women in childbirth. I, 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 I mean, they're restless because this is a time for this baby to come on out. It's the time for it to come. And so therefore, I mean, they're restless. They can't go on their right side. They can't go on their left side. Uh, they can't go in, uh, on their back. So they got to harness them up and say, listen, the time is now. And you got to push, baby, push. Somebody said, mm -hmm. I think that God is pregnant with something for the earth. Somebody say, uh huh. Somebody say, God is pregnant. Uh, come on, somebody say, God is pregnant with the glory for the earth. Uh, I, I want, I'm preparing the earth because it says uh, that the earth will be filled with the knowledge. So I'm giving you knowledge about the glory of God. So when you see the fire in the church, the cloud in the church, the, not only in the church, but Isaiah said, even in your house, you're going to have the glory. And over in your house, you're going to have the glory. Somebody shout and say, bring it on, King Jesus. Uh, one more time, one more time. That was like a, a surprise shot. One more time, said, bring it on. Bring it on. King Jesus. Yeah. Ah, somebody said, hallelujah. hallelujah. But now, uh, like a woman in childbirth, uh, I'm uneasy. Uh, I roll to the side. Mm -mm. The child is kicking with his feet, uh, not even with his head. I turn on the left side mm -mm, and move. And, I, and my back uh, is pushing. And so it is time for manifestation. Somebody said, hallelujah. It's time when, when a woman is given a child of birth. It is sometimes it's time. It, it is a time for something new, something fresh, something with a new eye eyesight, new uh, a, a fingerprint to print, a, a, a new a skin tone. And everybody look at the baby, and baby's always beautiful, isn't it? So, yeah. <laughs> I hate mothers. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> go home, go home to sleep again. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He says, but now, somebody said, but now. but now, like a woman in childbirth, he says, I'm going to cry out, I will gasp and pant, I will lead the blind. So he says, like a, like, like a woman in travail, giving childbirth, this is God saying now, I am going to cry out, can we stand the God who can cry? A God who can roar out of Zion. A God who could roar out of glory. I don't think we have seen it yet. Somebody said, mm. He said, he said I'm going to cry out. He said, I'm going to gasp. I'm going to pant. I'm going to push. Because I, I'm carrying something for this last day church. And, I, and I'm breathing in glory. And I want to re release this baby that I'm gasping and panting and breathing about. And when it drops, it's going to drop like a cloud. It's going to drop like fire. Somebody say hallelujah. Put your hands together and bless God and say drop like fire. Somebody say hallelujah. He says, I will lead the blind by the ways they have not known. And so in this uh, conundrum that we are in, difficult situation that we are in, in this wilderness situation that we are in, grimy situation that we are in, God said, I'm coming to lead you, lead you out of this dark um, time. I will lead the blind by the ways they have not known. Uh, it's like uh, God allow everything to shut down, churches to shut down. Down, uh, pastors to shut down in, in one area in New York. They, they lost over 300 pastors. Some of the, ch are clo uh, some of the churches are, cl are closed down. Some other denominations are saying that some of the churches are not profitable because uh, the folks are not coming to church. They just button it up and that's it. The pastor go and buy groceries or sell groceries or something. <laughs> uh, somebody said, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I'm going stream and get a second wind. Uh, yeah, yeah, but, but now, somebody said, but now, 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 now. This now. is it, but now. Like a woman, you could get, 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 in, get in your imagery, but now. Like a woman in childbirth. I will push. I will gasp. I will punt. I will cry out in a burst of travail to bring in the flesh. To bring in the new, to bring in something original in the earth, something that eyes have not seen or the, the ears have heard about what God is going to do in your life, your family's life, and in your church's life. You have not seen it yet. I feel a, a little refreshing just hit me. Somebody say you haven't seen it yet. He says, I will lead the blind 
by your ways. They had not known. That's what he did for the children of Israel. He led the earth blind. He, he, he sent the glory of God before them. And we're going to see it personified with the children of Israel. I will lead the blind by the ways they have not known. God's going to take us uh, in the things that have blindsided us. Uh, blind spots. God is going to unveil things and reveal things to us and he's going to lead us into some places. Somebody say hallelujah. He's going to lead us into the wells of the wicked. Somebody say hallelujah. So therefore when the bank says that you don't have to pay your mortgage anymore, don't go and, and, and argue with them because the, the glory from the church hit the bank yeah, yeah. and erase your mortgage. Yeah. Somebody say mm -hmm. uh -huh. the glory hit the bank hit your account and erase your car loan. I can't hear you. The glory hit your bank and erase your student loan. Somebody say hallelujah. The glory of God hit to the bank and put more money in your past book that you've ever seen before. Somebody said, mm -hmm. The money hit to the Visa and MasterCard and American Express. That all been ripping us off anyway. Hallelujah. They start us off with 10%, and when you next time you see 21% and 31%, you wonder who on earth can pay that. But let me tell you, when the glory hit, when the glory hit the children of Israel 430 years down in Egypt, Egypt was working them for free, I mean, I mean slave labor, I mean working them hard to the bones, listen when it was paid a time, God had a word, he said go borrow everything, gold, silver, shoes, clothes, and boom we are out of there, and a matter of fact, while they were going out, them guys said what, we, we gave them all the gold earring, bracelet, our best shoes, best wedding dress, let's go get it again, while they were going to get it, the glory of God showed up, behind, I mean, behind the children of Israel, and it was darkness, to the Egyptians Glory. and every blessed one of them will drown. Somebody said, mm -hmm. So when your bank tanks, when your bank tanks, when the people, some of you don't like to hear this preaching, when the people who you borrow the money from that they die, you don't have the hands put it reaching out for you to put the money back in there. Some of you look scared. Can I prophesy? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. Put the money in my account. Let me get it out. And if you want to go bankrupt, you can go bankrupt. But I got my money yeah. in my pillowcase and in my pockets. So I can take to another bank. Yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. So this glory uh, it speaks about protection, covering from the heat. It also speaks about wealth transference. And so get ready. Right now we are looking poor, emaciated, disgusted, and sorry. But listen, a, a glory anointing going to hit the church. A glory anointing going to hit your business. A glory anointing going to hit where you work. An increase will come. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on, somebody say bring on the increase. Bring on the increase. I tell people I'm manifesting it in the earth. Young Cho in South Korea, he is manifesting it. When offering time comes, listen, church folks, it, it, it's a, it, the offering time you have armored cars pulling up. Armored cars pulling up. And the armored cars, they are filled with tithes and offerings. Somebody said, mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And then because of that, they are able to, 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 um, to, to take over the nation with the word of God on the television have their own newspaper they don't have to beg nobody I, I tell you and they're running running this, the, the nation somebody say hallelujah yeah, yeah. pray over the men and women of God who are going to run the nation ah oh, somebody say hallelujah yeah. Woo, have an entire mountain beginning of a mountain top filled with people just spread on out just praying 24 7 in prayer you can't stop a glory movement like that. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Woo, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. In some places in the earth. Already operating in the earth. And God is opening different pockets and spots. Just to show us that it's possible for global life to put your hands together and say something. And say it's possible for us. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody need to be on staff. Or you need money to pay close to be on staff. Put your hands together. Come on. Think outside the box, the glory box. He says, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he says, I will lead. We need some kind of leading right now. I mean, we, we can't have the, the, the blind leading the blind. 
But he says in Isaiah 42, he says, I will lead. The church is in need of leadership. And so we have to tap into I mean, the mind of God, what, what he's about to do after this shift, after this COVID, what, what next? What kind of model we would have? Will we have a Sunday morning model? Will we have a streaming model? Will we have our, our, our meeting at... Uh, because the, the crowd is going to be so great that we're going to meet down at the Lionel Robert Stadium. I can't put your hands together for that. Some of you, when I'm speaking faith, you're like, you're, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Good. I didn't stop your hands in faith. Uh -huh. uh, over at the mall. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You never know what God will do. Somebody say, you never know what God can do. Somebody say, hallelujah. Yes. There are a lot of folks uh, who are in need of salvation. People in need of healing and deliverance. People that I need to that I need to be set free from that from the hostile bondages of the enemy. Somebody say hallelujah. He says, I'm gonna lead. I I he said, God say, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna lead you. He's gonna lead you as an individual, he's gonna lead you in paths of righteousness, he's gonna lead you into paths of prosperity, he's gonna lead you into paths of refreshing. Somebody's gonna lead, and you're gonna get a, the best husband any man, any woman can. Can get some of the men gonna get the best uh, um, wife a man can get somebody say hallelujah and when you begin to produce you're gonna get the best anointed sons and daughters in the in that reproductive cycle somebody shout and say hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. somebody say hallelujah, hallelujah. And I will lead. He's coming to lead nations. America, we need I mean, leaders to tap into God who leads the nation. I believe we still have, still have our money in God. We trust. And I'm, I'm praying daily that, that the money we have in our pocket will prophesy to us. When we're in the grocery store spending it, it will say, look at that money. God, God is still in charge of the earth. God is still in charge of America. Put your hands together if you can and help a brother out. Yeah, somebody say hallelujah. God will find a way to prophesy to a nation. God is going to find a way to prophesy to people. Uh, he's going to prophesy to the billionaires who have money stacked up. Uh, just uh, on, 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 on the Friday, they, they, got, they, they, they found a house that had about $2 million in it. Uh, pounds was wrapped up and in, the, in, the, in the downstairs. Somebody said, mm -hmm. in England, in England. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Two million pounds. <laughs> the folks had it, had the money. The rabble rousers had the money. They didn't know what to do with it. And so, you know, they, whatever they had, not the FBI, but the Scotland Yard guys, they could smell money. So they smelled it, went down there and said, mm -hmm. took a picture. Ha, you could Google it when you're finished. They said, my God, why couldn't I smell too? <laughs> but he said, I will leave. Somebody said, thank God. I say in the midst of this quiet time, peaceful time, he said, God said, I'm, I'm going to lead you. I'm going to lead you by the way that uh, you, you have not known. God's going to take us uh, to, into some unfamiliar places. And when he takes us there, can I prophesy a little bit? Uh, we, we, it's going right there. It's, it's gonna, we're going to make that place prosperous. Uh, when we get there, that place is going to be prosperous. Somebody say hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Like our brother okay. Francis back there with his agriculture. I've been seeing his garden. I see a prosperous fig tree. I see a, I can't wait to go to Antigua to, to reap some. Uh -huh. <laughs> Daddy back there. <laughs> Touch that in and wave. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so he says, but he says, I will lead the blind by the ways that they have not known. There are some ways that we have not known. And then the scripture says that, that, that there's a path that no man has walked. And there's a path that no birds have flown over. And it says that there's a path where no wild beast has trod. God has a path for you. For you, for you, right now is looking hard, rusty, sorry, sorry, hard. My God, but God has a path to lead you, and He's gonna just trust God, and He's gonna lead you. See, put your hands together and say, God, I trust you. Woo, somebody say, Hallelujah. As I have thought it to, will you believe I have a lot more to say? Well, I don't know if you could pass as I thought it to. Ah, somebody say, Hallelujah. He says, I will lead the blind by the by ways that they have not known. And he says, along, he says, and he says, I'm gonna lead you along unfamiliar paths. 
I will guide them. So God's going to guide you in paths that you did not know. And he's going to guide you in unfamiliar place. Oh, you, 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 the king is it. Uh, that uh, they hire you to be a salesperson. And then the, 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 the boss, uh, president come and say, come on up. Uh, and then when, it, when you're coming, they say, he said, he said, this desk and this chair, this black chair is yours. You are the next executive vice president because I am retiring. All right, come, come on. on. Uh, my, uh, come on. Have Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm going to lead you. Somebody say, I'm going to what? I'm going to lead you. Now listen, I heard about this story. This woman, she was a uh, true story. I read it in a book. And uh, listen, she, she, was, she was just uh, a, a, a child of God and just paying her tithe, just cooking out of her house some little bakes and some tarts and a little soup. And she just, uh, in, in, in the day, that the Holy Spirit told her to just go on this particular place to, 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 to sell her stuff. So she went down, parked her car up, and she is selling at her stuff. In come this lady and said, hello, how are you? Do you, do you cook? Do you cook well? Do you, she said, yeah, I've been doing this like for three, four years, cooking and going on the street. I said, she said, do you know something? Can you come to this address? Give her the address. She comes up by the address. The lady said, you know what? I am, uh, this is in South Africa. She said, I'm going back to Australia. I've been running this thing for about 20 years. I'm retiring. I was thinking about selling it, but I'm not going to sell it. I'm going to give it to you. So in one day, she had a bakery and a restaurant in one day. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Somebody said, hallelujah. Let me go to South Africa. We find out this lady and go eat in a place. I said, I preach about you. Somebody said, hallelujah. And so therefore, is that only the sweat and the brawn? And a hustle, and up in the night to counting all them sheep, them demonic sheep, uh -oh. and you're not weak, and you're nothing happening. Yeah. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. Yeah. You just lift your hands and say, God, you lead me. You come on, somebody say, come on, somebody say, Lord, lead me Lord, lead. In, into unfamiliar places. And so we, when, when we come back, when we bounce back, when the church bounces back, he's going to lead us into unfamiliar places. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah. It, it, it's just like in COVID, you have your mind come help me. Tell me about South Africa and the church. In South Africa, this, this uh, particular pastor wanted to, uh, to build his church. But he said, I'm going to build my church during COVID. He got a lot of faith, put it on. And, and so, and, and the Muslim wanted to bite. Uh, and he said, God, you got to help me. Hallelujah. And, and you tell the rest of the story. How do get the money? Amen. Praise it. Yeah. So, uh, this apostle um, that I uh, covered in South Africa, uh, he's been wanting a church for a long time, and um, there is a piece of property that has like uh, the side structures, the roof, part, like a few bricks in the back, but it's not up all the way, and um, apparently uh, some people have been just loitering and sleeping and, and homeless people just sleeping there. Uh, but uh, some people who were walking by, they were robbed by these people who were loitering in the area. And so the government said, you know what, we're going to knock this place down because it's now uh, eyesore in the community. People are getting hurt. And, and um, he says, well, you know, this is a good opportunity for the church. So they said, you know, we want to buy it. And then uh, the Muslims said, we want to build a mosque there. But they got the church, got the favor to buy it. And it was just 2000 to put the roof on. My God. And they said, if you can get the roof on, we're going, you're going to be the one we're going to bless. And we got, but you know, the money, the difference of the money there and here is just different. So I said, 2000 is nothing. We got together with some saints and we sent the money. And they are now in the process of putting on the roof in the midst of COVID where they say that area was had another variant. It was bad. But God is blessing the church of God. Amen. Yes, you take it. So I can yeah. uh, God is like, put your hands together and just bless God. Hallelujah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and, and we are going. And we are going to South Africa. Yeah. We went to South Africa with Ebola. And we didn't have any more Ebola. So my son of it. To Nigeria. In Nigeria. Again, you understand me? I mean, these are country dot boundaries and fence. But we went still and now I'm here. Yes, we are still here. Hallelujah. We just applied the blood and we go away. We went in and we came out. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory be to God. So here we go. 
I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm going to just stay here. I'm going to just um, fix up this, clean up this, and we're going to pause right here because I believe God is about to do something in us. So he says, I will lead the blind by the ways that they have not known. And he says, if you're going to lead us along unfamiliar paths, I will guide you. Then he says, I will turn. This is what he did. He turned on the light for our people who were in slavery for 430 years. Lord, I pray that you turn on the light for us. Somebody said, turn on the light for us. Ask Somebody say hallelujah. He says, I will turn that darkness into light before them and they make the rough places smooth. So, God, so that when the glory showed up, and all this is description of the glory, he says that the glory will lead you into unfamiliar paths. The, the glory of God will lead you down unfamiliar pathways. And things at places that you did not know. That's what he did to the children of Israel. And he says, he, he said, I'm going to turn on the light. Even in the night when it's dark, you got light. Even in Day, I will give you a cloud to, to cover you. The same thing he did for them in the wilderness, he's going to do for every one of us. Somebody said, do it for me right now. Yeah. Somebody said, hallelujah. hallelujah. It was where you had blind spots. Places where it was dark, obscure. You could not see. Places you were praying about. You were thinking, you were praying about things and you, you, you're not getting the answer. But you're going to stand in there like Aunt Hannah until the baby is with birth. So somebody say hallelujah. Or Zachariah until J John the Baptist is with birth. So somebody say out of barrenness. Somebody say hallelujah. Out of your dark season, God is, co is coming through to release the glory upon you. One more time. Uh -uh. In your dark season of your life when you think that the enemy got you whipped, that you're in slavery for over 430 years, that God is planning to release the glory upon you, to take you into unfamiliar places. Somebody shout and say hallelujah. He says, I will turn in the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. I'm going to smooth it out. I'm in the wilderness. Uh, I'm not going to reach there yet, but I'm going to tell you just ahead when I'm going to reach, I'll preach it again. When the glory of God went before the children of Israel, it did not say all the priests get a, um, um, a pickaxe and all the cutlasses that I find from Egypt. No. It says, when the glory of God moved from the back and move to the front just follow uh, the glory so therefore when you're following the glory we, we, nobody there was spending time just a moment with a pickaxe oh, I wonder if it is noon time buddy lunch time uh, clearing clearing a pine tree no 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 listen move with the cloud move with somebody come on somebody say move this is it come on somebody say God calls me to move with the cloud one more time say God when this cloud shows up, cause me to what? Move with the cloud. So the, the, the command was Moses. When the cloud moves from the back, that after I've wounded your enemy in the back, it moves to the front. Just walk, and there's a glory will carve out a path for over 600 million people to walk through. Think about it if they want to have a pickaxe, shovels, those little dolls, and Thomas Machetes. How long are we going to be there? And, and now we cry, hey, my mom, we hungry, man. Let's just let's, 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 let's wipe out that. Let's just wipe out lunchtime. Let's just wipe out the um, guys harassing the Moses. Let's go. Get behind the glory cloud. Yes. And let's go. Glory cloud moving yeah, 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 yeah. and pulling up all the big shrubs, big things, making it a sufficient part for all those people just to walk through. Yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I can't hear the house up in here. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Put your hands together. Can you see? Can you see? Hallelujah, God wants to deliver us uh, out of this COVID. He's going to deliver us a big. Because he is what? He is our, come on, listen. I'm winning down here. Somebody say, he's our what? He is, this person that I say, he is my champion. Come on, say, touch us and say, that is. I call it um, Isaiah 42, 15. I mean, 13, 14, 15. He said, that is Orel's champion. Say, 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 call your name and say, God is Orel's champion. God is Orel's warrior. God is Oral's leader. He is leading me into prosperous places. He is leading me into un places that are unfamiliar to my eyesight, to my psyche, but he is leading me there to cause me to prosper and be a blessing wherever I go. Oh, I feel God right there. Put your hands together for that one. Somebody say hallelujah. 
And then the God I saw says that he's birthing something new. He is putting his birthing something new in the body of Christ. A new spirit, a new model, a new prosperity in the house of God. He's going to bring in new believers in the house of God. You going to want to what happened here? God is just going to bring folks from the east, the west, the north, and the south. Somebody say hallelujah. Because God is refreshing the church and bringing a new model in the house of God. He's going to change up and shift the way how we do church we're going to do church differently and maybe we say Lydell Roberts and then the next time we say meet me at the mall and then we say meet me under the gum tree no St. Thomas the gum tree on the road by Canton the gum tree the gum tree I feel that I feel that I must feel that I need Jesus I my brother out whoop to you glory glory to God Hallelujah. My God. Somebody said my God. So that's all. Somebody, come on. Somebody said that's, that's my God. In the glory. I, I, listen, when, I, listen, when I'm in the glory of God, I mean, we entered into the glory of God. I think um, my wife was with me. And I'm um, minister. Are you one of you with me? The glory in Tartora. Yes. My God. I had some glory times. I was in the glory and I was in the glory. You know, and sometimes I'll be preaching. I get up to preach. And I can't preach. Everybody in the church looking at me. And I can't say nothing. I just say, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I can't open my mouth. The preacher on the stage don't know what to do. And the people don't know what to do. And I don't know what to do. Just bump into the glory. Because God gonna, is birthing something. Come on, somebody say, God is birthing something. But let me tell you something. When, when the glory dropped in, uh, everybody had their own feeling about this glory when it dropped up in uh, Tartola. Uh, to, to me, I mean, but I think one is that we have everybody described what it is. But to me, it was like a blanket came in the house, a glory blanket, and it went like this. Shoom, and shoom. And then when it did that shoom, I couldn't say anything. It just closed on everything. And then what happened in the church was pandemonium. Because people in the church never sensed the glory. I was, I was, I was crying for them and saying, Lord God, I can't talk, but I'm saying, mm. <laughs> And then I think um, Sister Blois said to me, I said, Pastor, you're out there crying all night, man. You want to say, mm, mm, mm. I said, but I wanted to open my mouth. I could not open my mouth. Because people running out the church like pandemonium. People on the organ, people on the bass, people up on the church, the, on the big dignitaries. Hey, why you running? <laughs> because the first time, and the preacher called me and I said, man, they, 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 they were praying a uh, week for the glory. We were praying a uh, week for the glory. They hit the house and the my people ran. He said, they had him up all night. Call and I said, all his leadership say, Pastor, I'm sorry. I said, Ma, you should go to sleep. You're up, you're, you're sleepy right now, right? He said, Well, you should not take the phone up. Tell them catch you in the morning. You ain't in the glory, they won't act. <laughs> Somebody said, mm-hmm. Uh -huh. And in the glory that we experienced was ease. People were people were filled with the Holy Spirit by ease. But my my my, ma, my wife, she she the, the guy who was carrying the pastor's bag brought in him, looking supreme and proper. Maybe he was a police or something for his God. I said, Do you want the Holy Ghost? No. And to ask in the glory, Elder Williams, do you want the glory? And the, the glory guy hit him like this. <laughs> do you want the glory? No. So my wife said, why? My wife is the one who was smart. She said, get it. And then boom, he dropped down on that bench and get it. <laughs> I was there arguing with him. I said, boy, you got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. You're grabbing the man bag it, and you want what a man got on him. You got to be sick. Sure, child, but she was a smart one in the crowd. Yeah, you always have to walk around smart one in the crowd. Somebody said, mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, I tell you, man, listen, I'm talking about the glory, and it's crazy up here. Ah, somebody said, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I got someone to pause right there. I got no more. Anyway, we can't take no more right now. So we don't come for the rest of it. Then God rose out of glory. My God, and He says, He said, I will turn the darkness into light. That's what we want some light now. We need some information. We need some revelation knowledge about these times. He said, I'm going to turn on the light. Come on, expect you. Expect you. Go to sleep with a book to write down stuff. Hallelujah. I will, God will turn on a revelatory light, glory light. And, and, and you know, some of you will get a book. Some of you will get information about your life and all that kind of stuff. Where to go? He's going to lead you. He said, I will turn the darkness into light before them, just before you. And make the rough places smooth. That's what he did with the children. He said, take them uh, it, 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 ease. When the glory comes, it gives you ease. 
Oh, because God is your Father, show up with all His splendor and His glory. He says, These are the things I will do. I encourage you to read this over and preach it again to yourself. And he said, What? Was this in the Bible? When I met him, I said, This is the Bible, right? Isaiah 42, 13, 14, 16. This is for our time. This is for our day. This is for our emancipation. This is for our liberation. This is for the glory of God to shine upon us and radiate through us. He says, these are the things he says, I'm going to do for you. I will not forsake them. God will not abandon you. Somebody say hallelujah. Put your hands together for God's word. Come on. Say hallelujah. My God. That was the first ch ch chapter in my text. Ah, somebody say hallelujah. Come put your hands together again one more time. Oh, yeah. I can't have something to drink and sit, but I don't see nothing. <laughs> Glory be to God, but it's okay. It's okay, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm like, I'm all a good, nice preaching. <laughs> ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So here we go. We're going to do a call to Christ. It's 2 um, Thessalonians 2 14. And if you're in the house and he wants to pray for you for salvation, lift your hands up. You have to come forward. Lift, uh, lift your toe up. Lift your finger up. I might see it, but God, God says. Hallelujah. Don't be those religious games. But whatever you want to live. Hallelujah. Short sleeve up, whatever. But God sees the heart. At home. Well, nobody sees at home, but somebody could touch the iPhone, squeeze the iPad, touch your big screen TV, kneel in your house. This is time to accept Jesus Christ. He wants to bring the glory of God to us. Here what he says in 2 Thessalonians 2.14. He says, He called you to salvation when we told you the good news. He called you, you heard the good news. So he's calling us to salvation, to redemption, for us to change, to repent, to come back to God. So he says he called you to salvation when, he, when we told you the good news. Now you can share in the glory. Now he's saying, you come to salvation, you accept God, you repent it, and now he said, I'm calling you to taste and glory. participate in his glory. And, and he says, now you, you can share or taste in the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. oh, come on. That, I mean, this, this, this glory is so valuable and so precious. And so God is saying, you can share. I can share my glory yes, yes, yes. with you. Uh -huh. Second Thessalonians 2.40. You can look up and go home. And then we're going to do the healing also. We all will pray for the sick. In Psalm 30 and verse 2, it says, Lord my God, I call to you for help, and you healed me. Now we're going to pray for folks to be saved. If you're in the house, you just say this prayer with me, and God will save you. At you at home, say the prayer at home, in your bathroom, in your car, in your opening your boat, wherever you are. You say it. This is the time, and no matter who you are, you might be on LinkedIn watching us. You might be one of those billionaires. We always put this thing on, on the LinkedIn. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because God is going to pop into billionaires' hearts. Yes, yes. I mean, I tell you, I like looking for the billionaires. I tell you, I, I will call someone. Else. I have Bill Gates on my feet. So watch out. Somebody said, mm -hmm. I got the other guy for Virgin. Very. I mean, Apostle Evelyn. Virgin. Over there, who has the iron across there. Mm -hmm. I watch his stuff. He watch my stuff. Somebody said, mm hmm. I hear you, you're so scared. Mm -hmm. yeah. so don't, be, don't be scared. If you see a couple of billionaires, sure. I said, man, I mean, listen to this guy all the time. He's going to lead me to Christ. Because I go, I go where they are. Somebody said, hallelujah. Whoop, to you. Shia Baba, I feel God. Here we go, here we go. Let's pray for salvation. Salvation is asking Jesus into your life, into your heart for salvation. With all the stuff that's happening, with all the money you got in your pocket, <laughs> that's not it. You're going to die and leave it. You're going to put it in your casket. You say, when I die, put all my billions in the casket. It's going to conquer us. And the same people who you who sign it, that they'll know to put it in. They're going to dig it up and, and take it out. Anyway. Okay. Somebody said, mm. <laughs> Let's pray. Yes, yes. So Jesus, today, come into my heart. Jesus, be my Lord and Savior today. In the house of the house. Say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus, right now, I renounce and I reject out of my life the works of the devil out of my life. And today, I welcome Jesus to be the Lord and master and of my life. 
and my soon coming Savior and King in Jesus' name. Listen, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, for sharing this great salvation and your glory with me today in Jesus' name. Somebody shout. Amen. Amen. So you say that prayer, put it in a um, the different boxes you can reply to folks and say, Hey, Pastor, I say that prayer on LinkedIn, LinkedIn box, Facebook box, YouTube feed, Twitter feed, Twitter box, and then rejoice with you. Amen. And also, we have if you don't have a, a church home and you're listening to us someplace and you kind of go to your home, you, we have information that you can become a, an online member of Global Life Church. You can go to www globallifechurchusvi.org and there's a forms page download that form that talks about the online membership and then we can include you in all our offline prayer study and everything else and we will teach you the word of God so God bless you, we love you amen and we appreciate you, amen Hallelujah. now we're going to pray for the sick anybody in the house sick and you can touch the part that is sick, touch it um, at home you're free, touch all over when in the bathroom, do whatever you have to do. But in Psalm 30 and verse 2 says, Lord my God, that's a cry for God to help. I call to you for help. Help, God, I'm calling for help in our prayer. And you healed me. Now, Father, today, touch whatever is traumatizing you. Even you have a doctor's report of death. Right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we attack what seemingly, seemingly people think that is the most difficult thing. The reversal of death. Now we reverse the spirit of death in the life of men, women, boys and girls. Those who are here now on demand and those who will be catching it after. Now Father, we've been talking about the glory of God. Turn on the light of life on the inside of their life now. We say we speak a word over them that they will not die and they will live. Now people who are in need of brand new organs, some are in need of a, of a, a lung, some are in need of a heart. God, you're the one who created them in their mother's womb and gave them that those nice functioning organs. Now they're in your womb. Now, Father, we thank you, Father. We release now from heaven brand new hearts, brand new lungs, brand new livers. Just put your hands up and prophetically grab whatever, brand new eyesight, brand new eyes, brand new eyes wrist, brand new anvil that we can hear. We speak to ears, be open now. As a matter of fact, just put your, uh, this is how sharp my do it. Uh, put your, your hands in your ear. And when I say in the name of Jesus, be open, just pull it up. In the name of Jesus, be open and hear. In the name of Jesus. And so, Father, I thank you. Everything, the cochlea, about anvil, everything functions correctly. No endings. They hear the correct sounds and, 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 and symphony now in the name of Jesus. People with an ankle ache, a foot disease. In the name of Jesus, we speak to uh, foot disease and uh, um, carpal, I mean, carpal tunnel um, syndrome and also uh, cartilage that are worn. I mean, in our, our, our feet and our hands, uh, in um, uh, our hips. Somebody who's up for hip replacement, we stop his re hip replacement. We call him for a, a bone, a bone transplant from heaven in the name and the blood of Jesus. While they are rest and while they are asleep, we call for it for a bone, a bone transference. They're going to be wearing no plastic, no metal, no platinum. We call it for the real deal that God who created them we call for it for bone transplant now in the realm of the spirit in the name of Jesus somebody who's suffering from insomnic um, headaches insomnia when you go to sleep headaches come in the name of Jesus uh, they go in the name of Jesus those who are have been attacked by the um, Sikabas and Ukabas spirit, different demonic uh, personifying male and female, right now fall down and die in the name of Jesus. And we, 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 we decree and we declare that God's people, they like to come and, uh, and, 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 and mess with God's people in the name of Jesus. When we call you off that as a demonic assignment, that hellish assignment, and we say, we, You cease, you stop tormenting God's people in the name and the blood of Jesus. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Yeah. And so, Father, we just thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, also, 
Okay, good. We pray for this uh, sister who, who fell and hit her head in the name of Jesus. Uh, we say that the gray matter in her head will be healed quickly. Uh, there will be no marks. There will be no trauma. There will be no, no side effects. We, we speak it forth. We send uh, the, the voice of healing to her where she is right now in Philadelphia in the name and the blood of Jesus. We call her mother heal whole and well and let your mother hear it to the plate play the prayer the plan that i'm talking i'm praying uh, we prophesy over her life that she will not die and uh, that she would live we, we prophesy over her life that her skull will not be fractured if there's any fracture right now we speak to the bones to be mended like glue back where when they take an x-ray they will not even see a fissure crack in jesus name somebody say hallelujah Let's put our hands together and thank God for the miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Lord, we thank you because we know in whom we believe. Amen. Yes, Hallelujah. So right now we're going to shift. It was a pleasure to um, talk to you, talk, um, talk, um, minister to you. Hallelujah. That was like the first paragraph in the sentence of my sermon. Hallelujah. The next time we will we'll get some more. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. Lord, gonna, if you're going to take in the house, lift your hands up. Someone will bring you um, the elements of communion at home. You can grab water, apple juice, almond juice, or what have you. If you are a global life, you could always come to church and request some and get some. You can take it with us at home. Now, Father, we lift the bread. This bread represents your broken body and Calvary's tree. And now, Father, right now, let it, O oh God, be personified, uh, be a prototype to our body, that nothing is broken upon our body because you took everything that was broken upon our body for years, even now in this season, in the name of Jesus, we break the back. As we take this communion, we break the back of the enemy. We break that spirit of COVID and this pandemic that was caused havoc in the earth, in India, in the Virgin Islands. It's like a bouncing ball. It's down one time, up again. We curse it out of the face of the earth. Let a fresh west wind blow it out of our coast, out of the earth. In the name of Jesus, as men and women bow their knees and repent. In Jesus' name, everybody shout. Amen. Let's eat together as one family. Glory be to God. Now we thank you, Father, for the this great juice that represents your blood that was shed on Calvary. Your word declares, without the shedding of blood, there is no cleansing or remission for our sins. We thank you that you bore on the cross all of our sin and our shame. So you bore our sin and our shame. And if people want to shame us in the earth as we take this, it erases the shame of the past. Now, Father, you're putting us into a good spot. You're putting it in a, not a, in a victorious spot. We're not a victim of our past. But right now, we are victorious because we are a part and we are in love with our champion and wife and our leader. So we live it, discerning what we are doing now. When we drink it, if there are any growths in our body, cysts in our body, fibroids in our body, black arteries in our body, as this flows through our right and left ventricle, it clears a good path. And no trash can stay in our body. It cleans our body, the best cleaner. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Let's drink it together as one family. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is good. Somebody say, God is good. good. Hallelujah. So at this time, we're going to have our uh, tithes and offering. If you need an envelope, kindly put your hand up. Amen. And my wife will join me. Song, a little song, a little song, my technician, a little offering song. Yeah. 
If you're making a check, make it payable to Global Life Church. Also, you can um, give it in the back on, um, with a credit card. You can give a visa or MasterCard in the back. So they know how much you're going to give. You can also call in the church during the time we're here in the service. Uh, so I can put that number up, 340-774-5400. And you could also give. Online, you can give um, to our PayPal, Global Life Church. Um, that need to our PayPal is on Facebook. You'll scroll down and you'll see. Amen. Do we have it up? Uh, my, my technician. Hallelujah. Okay, amen. So there's a 29th? Today? No. Okay, the 30th, 30th. The last one. The last one. No. One more, right? One more, right? Oh, okay. For 30th, okay. Yes, God, yes. Oh, yes, here's worship. Here's my worship. All of my worship. Hallelujah. Receive, 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 receive. All of my worship. Amen. So let's uh, pray over our hip. Um, pray. Here's my worship. Amen. Let's turn our hands to the offering. Father, we thank you for the blessing of your people. Of your, your bless the people. Lord Father, you've been in the sermon, you say you're going to guide us into places that are unfamiliar to us. But you're going to lead us there to bless us and to prosper us. And so, Father, let, let that be was materialized by, uh, by revelation, be materialized with substance to the people. That which was materialized by a revelation of your word. Let it be now be materialized as substance to your people now in the name of the of blood of Jesus. Let it come down into your life, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Men, uh, they're going to give into their bosom in the name of They're going to be blessed, looking good in this season because that's what you want to do in this pandemic, COVID, wilderness type season. You're coming with your glory. You're coming with your wealth. Glory speaks of wealth. You're coming with not only wealth, but you're coming with your divine mega wealth to bless us. I tell you, you're going to bless us. I mean, we're going to be surprised, so surprised with his blessing. But God is coming. He's going to be quiet and silent no more. He's coming on our behalf to touch and turn around the last situation in our life. God bless you. Amen. Receive my worship. Let's lift your hands up and let me just point at us. Yes, Lord, receive your worship. Bring up, bring up. Yes, God, receive our tithes, our offering, our personal worship. Yes, God, receive, 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 receive. Yes, I will not be silent. I will not be silent.
yes, yes, yes. That is awesome. Father, right now we just thank you. Let your light and your life rest upon your people. Let your goodness rest upon your people in the name and the blood of Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we give you praise. Everybody shout. Amen. Amen. God bless you.